Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 tutorial part 1. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about various topics in general about uh, DB2. This is not like a tips and tricks series or the HDR series. Uh, this is like a new series, tutorial series part 1. So in this, I'll be touching base with various topics for DB2. In this uh, part 1, we are going to discuss about the transaction logging and buffer pool page cleaning and how they relate to each other. Now, the scripts, uh, the data files that I'm using are available for free download at db2lwacademy.blogspot.in. And this is the image that I have put, like I want to explain what is happening. This is a simple diagram, I, I the way I see and I conceptualized the things. So I have put here, so that this, like you can, you can keep this like two halves, the, the top half is the database is in RAM and the second half like this portion what you see is in disk okay now whenever the users connect to the database the database gets initialized in the RAM area and various memory areas are getting allocated the log buffer is a very important one that that is what I want to discuss today and the buffer pools and how they relate to each other so and what are the functionalities so that's what we are going to look into this class today and uh, you can see like there is a user one, user two, user three. So they are all connected to the database and one guy can execute an update or a delete, another guy can execute a delete or insert, another user can execute load, re-arg, even it can be any SQL. So as long as it is a data modifying, like a change producing thing, or you're modifying some table or changes, even the structure of the changes, etc. Like sorry, the structural changes of the table, like you add a column, you remove a column, or you modify a column, or uh, create a new table, create a new procedure, whatever it is. So it's going to generate a transaction log record for you. So each user connected to the database, which is available in the RAM, he's going to perform some queries. And even if it is a select query, probably transaction, not probably for select queries, the transaction log record is not going to be there because it's only reading the data. So it's not modifying any existing table or data like that. So the transaction log records won't be there. Now for other modifications, the transaction log records are going to get generated and they'll be filling up this log buffer memory area. So you can see that the transaction log records are placed into the buffer memory area in the RAM and it grows in the downward direction. We can just assume like that it's, it's growing, okay? And eventually it will become full. <clears throat> now, once it becomes full, you will have to flush out the buffer from the memory area to the hard disk. And that is where your transactional log files come into picture. So whatever the log records that are generated and placed in the RAM area are getting flushed to the transactional log files in the disk. So which is like S000, the number of zeros is actually not exact. It's S0000, like a, a bit huge number, S0001.log. S002 dot log, S003 dot log, and it goes on. Okay. Now, uh, so whatever is in the buffer only will come into here, and there are two occurrences or two times when it happens. When, when obviously when the buffer is getting full, it has to get flushed, and the second time, every time the transaction commits. So here I have TR and transaction one, transaction two, transaction three. So every time the transaction commits, on commit I have to flush the buffer. And the point to note here is like on for the logging on commit, both open and closed transactions are flushed from the log buffer at that point in time. So it's not like if I commit transaction three, only the transaction three log records are pushed down into the disk from the buffer and TRN1, TRN2 still remain the buffer. It's not like that. At that point of time, whichever transaction is issuing the commit, so even the transaction one can issue the commit or transaction two can issue the commit. At that point in time, whatever log records are there, open, closed, all the log records will be flushed here. So in the disk, in the S001.log, you can assume like these internal writes or like it is uh, pushing those information and writing into these log files and this log file will eventually get filled up. So it, go, it, it then goes into the next file, it then goes into the next file like this. So there will be, your current, so as the transactions are getting generated, buffer is getting full and it is also getting flushed. Commit is also happening in between, in between. It's also getting flushed and there will be a current log position for you. So which will tell like what is your, it should be like TR and three last change that, that has happened here. That will be our current log position. Okay. 
<clears throat> now there are so whenever they say you know on commit there is a lot of io that is happening the commit is a very uh, uh, intensive activity uh, in terms of disk as well because the commit is flushing out the buffer uh, flushing out this log buffer from the ram to the disk so that's why the commit they say is like incur a lot of io the io is not from the io is from the log buffer to the disk and not from buffer pools to the pages so this i i will come back to to this later so what is happening so as you run the transactions the log buffers are getting the log transaction log records are getting generated it's getting uh, flushed into the disk into transactional log files and there is a current log position now there are various memory other, uh, other memory areas that goes into the database like log list there is um, db heap there is monitor heap uh, for the instance level and there are also other other lot of memory areas um, sort heap shared sort heap uh, like i can remember package cache catalog cache lot of things are there so backup buffer area restore buffer area utility heap lot of things are there other memory areas i am not discussing all those things and sig uh, important significant <coughs> memory area that we want to discuss is the buffer pools so we saw that these uh, in our discussion we are seeing that there are lot of changes that are happening uh the modifications that are happening and they are getting recorded into these log files and so ultimately these changes needs to go into the container pages the container is actual table space will like table space is a logical thing so it doesn't there is no nothing like in the disk i can say that is a table space i can only show you containers a table space might have one container or two container or three container like that in this example there are three containers and each containers have these pages within these pages only the modifications that are getting done are written into the disk here now i can't directly write whatever the modifications that are happening here directly into this container disks because that is like a direct io that's like a disk io and it is going to be very 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 slow <coughs> otherwise while i'll go for a database i can directly keep everything in files and open the file write it close the file right Th that is not the concept of the dbms right we want to give you performance <clears throat> so what we are doing here is the containers is the one actually containing all these pages and as per the query execution or the workload on the user side we'll prefetch the pages and place it in these places in the memory area called as buffer pools so the buffer pools will uh, be filled up with the container pages like p1 p2 p3 like that up to p1000 so this is like for example i have taken a 1000 page buffer pool so you will have automatic tuning and other stuff expanding the size of the buffer pool dynamically which is a different discussion now assuming a finite number of pages in the buffer pool and based on the update query or delete query or select query the the pages can be prefetched from the container so you can see the arrow like going here so the prefetchers will move the pages from the container physical disk and place it in the buffer pool so that this query execution when it runs it can find the page in the buffer pool itself and update the page here itself thereby avoiding the disk io so i can accumulate see as the transactions are proceeding here i can do more and more changes in the buffer pools because the buffer pool update uh is going to be very fast it is in the ram same ram so it's going to be like a fast avoiding the disk io so that is why the buffer pool came into picture so that it can give you good performance in terms of execution of the query instead of updating the records directly into the disk containers we are keeping the pages in the buffer pool by means of the by means of prefetching mechanism and we are placing and it is also caching also it's not only just a buffer it caches also caches means it keeps that page there itself so that next time when somebody else executes if that page is there instead of going for the disk it can it can find that page in the buffer pool itself and it can do the modification or it can do whatever if it is a read query then it can just display the data if it is a modifying query it can give you uh, it can do that modification on that page in the ram in a faster manner <clears throat> so what will happen if i have this buffer pool so uh, now this all is seemingly good okay it gives me good performance so effect in effect what i'm doing is i'm accumulating all the changes in the buffer pool as the transactions are running i'm capturing all the changes here and i'm also capturing all the changes in the log buffer area and in the transactional log record by means of recording the transact the changes i am recording it in the transaction log files also and i'm recording in the buffer pools also so why i am recording in the transaction log files itself 
you know because i can't do it directly in the container and i do it in the buffer pools this buffer pool the system can crash or if i want to deactivate the database eventually these pages modification needs to go into the container right and if the system crashes how will i recover from the ram area i can ram is a volatile memory so you can't recover from anything from there so that is why whenever the transactional changes are happening i am recording and flushing it into this disk and i am keeping it in the buffer pool for caching and i am also not moving it to the disk immediately so the accumulated transactional changes are buffered in this area and periodically i have to write this right that is why the entire system is faster so i will accumulate the changes store it here for crash recovery purposes and i will periodically write the buffer pool pages modified pages into this container uh, so that task is done by page cleaners so that process is called as page cleaning right so so now there are certain triggers that needs we needs to consider like trigger means not the udf for trigger i'm talking trigger points okay see when at what point in time i need to move the pages from the buffer pool to the container hard disk right so to enable me to take that decision so that is called a means of a trigger point so the page cleaners will be triggered at specific points in time uh, so that this cleaning will occur that way uh, i don't have to recover i don't have to redo a lot of transactions from the transactional log in order to bring my database to a consistent state so what what happens because of this buffering is the database will be in a con inconsistent state because on container on disk the table modifications are not there the table modifications are there in the buffer pool and the table modifications are recorded in this log files so obviously even if i deactivate or even if i crash the system if the system gets crashed like the somebody killed the process or anything like that then the on disk data the table data is going to be inconsistent even though i commit the transaction i commit everything the change is only here it is not here right in the containers so for that purpose i need to frequently write this now how frequently is that there are events or trigger points so one is called a dirty threshold like for example this is what they call the change page threshold or there is a setting in the dbm cfg so see this is like 1000 pages and the pages are getting modified because of the transactions here so if you find 800 pages for example out of this 1000 modified then that can trigger the page cleaning activity that is the dirty threshold uh, cleaning so that particular activity will get triggered every time out of this that's like a setting that you can do in the dbcfg 80 means 80% so if your buffer pool is having 1000 pages if 800 pages are dirty then you kick off the cleaning so that you move this all the buffer pool pages to the containers so the on disk copy will get synchronized with the uh, with the transactional changes that are happening and you you need not uh, you need not go through a lot of uh replay of these transactional log files uh if you are if the crash occurs or something like that or even when you deactivate the database because of this dirty threshold cleaning that is happening at certain points of time you are reducing the amount of these transactional log files that you need to uh check when you deactivate the database or when you when a crash recovery occurs so that is the whole point and still it is a point in time so so there can be 800 modified pages but what if you you can also increase the buffer pool size right so if you have like a 32 gb buffer pool the dirty threshold is not going to frequently clean right so if you, because your the more changes you are trying to keep in the buffer pool memory area without moving it to disk is going to increase your number of files the transactional log files that you will have to go through so that you can bring the database back into a consistent phase either during crash recovery or even if you deactivate so whatever you are doing you have to do that activity right like you will have to make sure that all these pages are going in there right so deactivation itself will be slow crash recovery has to go through a lot of files so in order to avoid that dirty threshold is simply not enough because you can have a very sufficiently large buffer pool which is not frequently cleaning itself you know so then what they came up with is like there is a victim buffer victim buffer concept 
So the victim buffer concept is something like when you have this finite amount of buffer pools, right? So let's say for example, 1000 pages. So in this 1000 pages, obviously, see there are a lot of transactional records that we are talking and we are ignoring the read load, right? So it can even be in a select statement which is getting uh, pages into the buffer pool. So what will happen is in the buffer pool, there will be a lot of pages which are from a table which is only read only purpose. So those kind of pages need not be cleaned, they can be directly replaced. So that's called like victimizing a page, you know, if a page is there in the buffer pool and you don't want it actually, uh, and if you have like finite amount of pages to work with, and if new query requests some page to get in, obviously this buffer pool is, uh, see it, it might not be full up to 800 pages, but it can still be at 600, 700 pages full. So it is requesting for some other file, some other page. Uh, at some point of time, you will eventually, uh, fill up all these pages and the page cleaning is also triggered uh, but then there is a requirement like can you change like can you remove some page here and make room for the other pages right so that some new pages can be accommodated right so even though even though this uh, dirty threshold cleaning is there the victim buffers are the first concept like you know the, the victim buffers are the first thing you know so whether i can replace certain page so because there are lot of non-dirty pages also so i can just go directly and replace them now the victim buffer concept can apply both to uh, like the victim buffer is actually when you say page cleaning you have to move the page from uh, memory to the disk whereas if you are replacing a modified replacing a non-dirty page it is actually not doing a page cleaning it's just replacing the page right so technically it's not like victim buffers or anything technically it's not doing page cleaning but it is victimizing the page. You can just take, throw this page away and put one more page there. That you can do for a dirty page as well. See, that's the concept of victim buffers. So wherein, even if this page is dirty, I can still, uh, since this dirty page has been moved to the container, I can still reuse that page for some other new page request, all right? So that can also happen in a finite size of uh, buffer pool pages. So if you have like, if, if you have a sufficiently large buffer pool, uh, then the dirty threshold will not be happening in a very frequent manner, right? Uh, the victim buffers addresses the situation where you have a small buffer pool, right? So if you have only 1000 pages, obviously they will get filled very quickly and the dirty threshold will trigger, right? But victim buffers is something like, even if I am able to find a set of dirty pages, which I can victimize, I can go and victimize them, you know, just because I'm having a finite set of buffer pool pages and the victim buffers and dirty threshold are, are kind of hand in hand, okay? So, uh, they go hand in hand. So, so what happens is, if you have this, this finite amount of pages and you want to victimize the pages also, then also uh, you are reducing by synchronizing the changes that are happening in the RAM to the hard disk, you are reducing the amount of files that are required to do crash recovery. That's the concept. Now, the next thing that that happens is, now these two things will only help to some level because if the buffer pool is really, really huge, these, do, these two things will never trigger because you will not realize that event. You know, you will not realize that event, whether it is victim buffer event or whether it's a dirty threshold event, you will not exactly realize those events for a huge buffer pool, right? It's going to, so you are going to accumulate more changes into the buffer pool without modifying the disk. So to avoid that, there is a third trigger that is called as a LSN gap trigger. Now the LSN gap trigger, as it says, log sequence number gap trigger. Now this gap trigger is directly dependent on this transactional logging and the workload. So the more transactions you generate, the more, uh, so this is the current log position is going to go down and down and down like that. And there will be, the oldest uncommitted transactional position and the oldest dirty position. So the difference between the oldest dirty position to the current log position, that's what they call as like an LSN gap. Okay, that amount of space is what you configure as softmax and a LSN gap of the mentioned softmax measure of bytes is available. So if, if you are saying softmax like 200, which means two log files of LSN gap is available, you know. So which means that the oldest dirty position to the current log position, if it is two log files, I can allow that. Which means that I will not trigger any cleaning of pages uh, to the disk 
from the buffer pool RAM. But when the transaction goes beyond that limit, you say the LSN gap trigger gap is occurring, okay? Because it is beyond the softmax configured value, and the gap is going beyond the allowed softmax limit. So then a LSN gap trigger will kick off, which will do the page cleaning. Now there is another thing. It's not like see TR and one, TR and two, TR and three. Now even if the TR and one commits, right? The guarantee is that all the committed log records from the log buffer will be available in the transaction log files. So we are only making sure of that. Okay, we are not making sure of whether buffer pools is moving into the buffer pool pages are moving into the container just because if a transaction commits. See on commit, we are only moving from the buffer pool to the transaction log. So that is only we are doing. We are not moving the page from buffer pool to the containers. So because of that, even if the transaction one commits. that particular change happened in the buffer pool area in some page here right that page might still be there without moving to disk so that is called trans oldest dirty position which is not uncommitted transaction one committed but we are not moving the buffer pool pages right because this trigger also did not operate this trigger also did not operate that is why the requirement for this trigger itself came in because you are if you only if you only have the dirty threshold and victimizing buffer kind of a concept it is not enough because it it will accumulate a lot of changes here again you will go back to the same problem wherein the crash recovery or the deactivation takes a lot of time so the same problem will come so what they did was they wanted to trigger the cleaning of the buffer pool pages in a much more frequent manner uh, as per your workload you know so if there are more transaction log records getting generated and it is going beyond a certain limit of the number of uh, space the amount of space they will kick off the cleaning on the buffer pool and they will keep the modified changes move the modified pages from the buffer pool to the disk thereby reducing the amount of transactional log files that are required for crash recovery or the amount of uh, during the deactivation you will not feel that slow down of moving the pages from the buffer pool to the ram that that amount of movement will be less So that is what they are trying to achieve by means of LSN gap. But the problem with LSN gap is it is bound to your transaction logging. Remember that even if transaction logging transaction one commits, that could still be holding the oldest dirty position because it did not move the corresponding buffer pool to the RAM buffer pool pages from the RAM to the disk. So the oldest committed transaction might be well below the oldest dirty position as well. That situation can occur. Okay, now. now even the lsn gap is very tightly tied to the amount of changes that is happening on the workload right now what if there is a lot of read only things and very less like 1 gb of changes only has occurred and the buffer pool is also sized you know like 32 gb of buffer pool so 1 gb of modification it is holding so the dirty threshold victim buffers will not happen the lsn gap trigger also is not very uh, efficient because it is capturing in terms of It 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 still did not trigger like you know I can still have that one uh, GB of changes in the buffer pool right and it is also dependent very much on the type of workload if the transactional things are uh, if the workload is not highly modifying then the LSN gap will also be slow you know like the LSN gap will not occur so the frequent mod the synchronization of the buffer pools to the container disk will not happen that frequently so which is fine right. but they want to improvise right they want to use this buffer pool as efficiently as possible so that's why they came up with a time based concept so what what you can see here is like uh, the softmax is deprecated and they came up with page age trgd target mcr so what that kind of a, it is also a kind of page cleaning it is also kind of a trigger like that uh, but it is more time ticking time bomb based you know so it's like okay this page is living in the memory for the past 1 hour somebody modified it but for the past 1 hour nobody touched it or even read from it or even doing further modifications from it then that becomes a likely candidate for moving to the disk right so after so it's a more like a time based thing so every 1 hour or every whatever like you know based on the num the the amount of time that a page is not touched after modification so based on that also they can kick off the cleaning it need not be dependent on the workload then see if it is a not highly uh, you know modifying workload right 
then the LSN gap will not frequently clean the pages for you, right? So that situation, how will I, how will I address, right? Even the LSN gap, even the volume of change could be high, but it is not very frequent, you know. So that that's why they they needed a time based thing. So what they came up with was like a time based uh, page cleaning. So wherein based on the dirty page, uh, how much time it is spending on the buffer pool. Uh, how much frequently it is accessed there is a lot of probability and statistics coming into picture now you know so how long that page was there how frequently it got modified does any other application might require it in the next one hour like a lot of prediction algorithms like that right so based on the past usage predict the car next uh, you know extrapolate and use the usage uh, try to try to arrive at a probability that in the next one hour again that page will be definitely touched by some particular transaction you know like that kind of a uh, probability and statistical thing so based on the time this kind of a page cleaning can be triggered so that is that is one more trigger point right it's a, and you will find that when the page cleaning is happening it is a burst of activity and it is both cpu and disk intensive to some extent right because why it is cpu intensive it scans the ram it has to modify all the pages and everything it has to do all these calculations are there which page to remove which page not to remove a lot of decision making so a lot of cpu activity and obviously all those pages needs to be returned to the disk so a lot of uh, disk activity right so you will find and these will occur at certain points in time see whether it is dirty threshold whether it is lsn gap whether it is victim buffer cleaning all these things will happen like um, all all these things will happen uh, at certain points of time so at t1 something will occur at t2 some again the page cleaning at t3 another trigger will trigger event will occur you will realize an event and you will when you experience that event you will kick off the page cleaning so like that uh, significantly uh, the burst of activity will be there so for one hour the database will be cool like all proper then for the next 5 to 15 minutes there will be lot of this buffer pool page cleaning activity kicking in and after that again the system like okay everything is fine but coming back to normal the normal throughputs are coming back <laughs> then again uh, the the burst of activity of page cleaning will be there so it's like that it's a kind of discrete uh cleaning you know so what they came up with is so uh, even when you use page age target mcr whether you use softmax whether you use lsn gaps whether you use the dirty dirty page uh, threshold so all those things will not avoid such burst of activity of page cleaning so they came up with uh something called as alternate page cleaning for spreading the disk io over time so this is a complete different way of page cleaning wherein these dirty pages are getting cleaned which means like are getting moved to the disk intelligently it's not even time based it's not even the workload transactional modification based lsn gap based or dirty threshold based it is completely based on uh, how long it is there whether uh, how frequently it is getting accessed and all like those kind of details they will intelligently clean uh, the buffer pools thereby reducing the number of log files that are required to and the number of log files that are required to recovery and also thereby uh, i will very easily see what they are actually trying to make sure in alternate page cleaning is uh, one particular victim page will all, will be available for me you know in the in the buffer pool i am increasing the uh, number of victim pages available for me by frequently cleaning the dirty pages and those dirty pages will can be victimized directly i don't uh, that is what they are doing by means of that uh, by means of that uh, alternate page cleaning and it is kind of independent on the transactional load so that is what they are trying to achieve independent of your transactional load the this uh, age T tcr and alternate page cleaning are um, because they are more time based okay and this alternate page cleaning apart from the time based logic it also is a it will spread the disk io over time see at t1 there will be a page cleaning triggered at t2 there will be a page cleaning triggered at t3 there will be a page cleaning triggered this is like a discrete way of doing it but what will happen at t1 it will clean 100 pages and at t1 plus 100 seconds or plus 1 minute it will clean up another 50 pages which are the probable pages which will get cleaned up even before the lsn gap trigger or the dirty threshold triggers or some buffers uh, victim buffer triggers right so even before this 
waiting for this trigger event to happen if you, you don't need to wait for this trigger event you don't need to wait for the threshold cleaning like that you don't need to wait for this pages to get filled in you are intelligently cleaning up front by estimating the probability of those pages how frequently they are getting accessed like that so that way uh that way the io is spread so it will not be the page clean the disk io you know th that is what is the important thing here you are spreading the disk io over time in in alternate page cleaning which will not happen with the soft max or even with the page age target mc here it will not page age target mc here also will clean but it will clean more in a discrete fashion only whereas in alternate page cleaning it is cleaning in a much more uh in a in a probabilistic way you know <clears throat> so in the next 5 minutes i definitely know that these pages are going to be moved to the disk so why don't i move it right now you know similarly i'll i'll be continuously monitoring the page activity and in the next 15 minutes these are the likely pages that are going to get moved from the ram to the disk so i'll do it right now you know it's like that so it will spread the io over a period of time instead of t1 t2 t3 at instead of a discrete time interval it's going to intelligently spread and you will not even know that is happening right so it, because it might it it can choose not to clean certain pages right so it need it need not do a bulk cleaning right so it can do incremental intelligent cleaning of pages then and there from t1 to t3 whatever the pages are getting moved the same pages will get moved also right but then it will be done in a in a discrete instead of a discrete intervals of time it will be done in a continuous way in the background so that that is what i'm saying the disk io is spread over time so from the ram to the disk the pages are moved in a much more intelligent and continuous background manner rather than a discrete time based scanning of buffer pool and moving the pages so there will be not there won't be a burst of activity of cpu and disk when you are looking for alternate page cleaning again all these things even if you implement you will have to monitor it and make sure that it works the intended way you know then only you are realizing the real performance benefit so obviously setting the registry variable setting the page cleaning or setting this softmax is, is just a, you can just update the parameter monitoring and making sure that it works in in the way and it addresses your your performance issue that that is the critical thing so this uh, important uh, that is what i wanted to talk about so this is how this is how page cleaning comes into picture this is how transactional logging is also related and this is how deactivation transactional logging crash recovery why these log files needs why the requirement that these this gap should be less you know like all these things are how we are uh, connecting with each other like if i am able to give that big picture to you that is what this objective of this tutorial is um so i may not be okay i may not be 100% factually correct because certain things like i am talking like internal like you know about this alternate page cleaning and page mctr these are new functionalities so uh, please uh, provide your inputs please uh, feel free to correct me and all uh, if i have given some incorrect information so let me know um in your inputs or comments in the youtube page Uh, please subscribe to my channel youtube.com/db2lwacademy email me at db2academy@gmail.com that's it in this video tutorial please subscribe to my channel youtube.com/db2lwacademy uh, see you in the next video tutorial until then bye bye